Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week's 10 days. For today's final video, day 10 will take us to the 21st of February. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the external GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next uh, four weeks. That gets us uh, well into the early part of March. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was the 6am upload. We've also released weekend forecast and the e 42 day forecast you can as well please check out those two those three videos if you'd like to do that thank you so much everybody uh for doing that and like share subscribe on the videos thank you so much everybody we've got to put on around 85 subscribers to get ourselves to uh, 15.6k so if you could give us a sub that'd be absolutely fantastic tell friends about to subscribe as well and uh, we thank you so very much everybody for doing that did live stream uh last night a lot of fun we had a few laughs <laughs> Maybe one or two tears, mostly mine. Um, no, it was a good, it was a good live stream. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for uh, making last night's uh, live stream such fun. And uh, if you have not checked it out yet, you can uh, watch it live on Catch Up um, through the uh, live uh, tab there on the Gazwell YouTube homepage. Um, uh, we picked up a new channel member on the live stream, so I'm going to say thank you so much to Josh Brayshaw for becoming a channel member for Gazwell. Well, if, it's, if you would like to become a, a channel member, as Josh has done, all you need to do is click the join button. It will take you through to another page where you see what benefits you get for becoming a Gazworthy channel member. And you can sign up on that page as well. Channel members will get exclusive access to uh, a little uh, summer update tomorrow, actually. But we'll be going uh, across uh, YouTube and across the internet on Wednesday. But channel members will get to have a look at it a couple of days earlier. So, um, you know, that's the kind of thing we do. Uh, we have to do a channel member live stream once a month as well. So if you would like to become a channel member, get exclusive content, then uh, all you need to do is click the join button and uh, and sign up. Thank you so much to all of our channel members. Thank you so much to Josh Brayshaw uh, for uh, becoming a channel member as well. Um, you know, amazing, incredible. Thank you so much to our lovely channel members. Right, okay, let's start off the 10th of 14 day event. So, uh, we're going to begin in the stratosphere. Of course, we are. We're counting down the hours to the uh, southern stratosphere. Well, it's probably already started, actually. We see here with the temperature at 10 HPA over the North Pole from the JMA. That uh, the temperature, the black line here, has lifted up to uh, minus 40, or down around minus 55 a few days ago. Just a slight warming, and it's going to carry on rising over the uh, next few days. It may well get somewhere between minus 20 and minus 10, perhaps uh, later on next week. So, uh, warming is commencing. At 10 HPA, over, at 10 HPA of strategy over North Pole, at 30 HPA, a little bit lower down, closer to the troposphere. There we can see that uh, temperature is also beginning to warm slightly. Um, not as much, though, as at 10 HPA. Let's have a look at the two GFS runs. So, this is the midnight run. Uh, again, we can see that over the next couple of days, actually in around two days' time, the warming will restart really gathering pace again over Siberia, that moves into uh, the North Pole. Looks like there's a temperature up to around minus 16 there, over the pole, something like that. So on the temperature chart here, that's probably going to get somewhere there, I would have thought. So we can look quite dramatic on the, uh, on the chart from uh, the JMA. Um, moving on, so uh, that woman displaces the stratospheric polar vortex. We get a displacement event. Blue does push out of the pole and uh, into North Atlantic, Northern Europe, and uh, North America as well. Warming sitting over top of the pole then. By the time we get through to this time next week, not the same level, because we can't keep the temperature at that sort of level for, for very long. So temperature will start lowering, but still significantly uh, above average. And then we get this second warming, another warming. Uh, around the 22nd, 23rd of February, that again pushing on in toward the pole as well. That will probably send the zone of wind into reverse again, I would have thought, into the final week of February. Um, and displacement event continues, uh, therefore. But usually, I would get these repeated uh, warmings of the stratosphere this winter. I'm not sure what. You know what the reason is, what the cause of it is, but it's quite, uh, you know, quite unusual. Um, but GFS six then, at least the temperature up a little bit higher. I think the temperature goes up to minus twelve there, 
at uh, 10 HPA. So on the temperature scale there, we will get the black line probably up to there nearly somewhere. So, um, no, that will look really quite dramatic if, if it comes off. It's a little bit warmer than the midnight run, um, I think. So uh, warming uh, next week uh, in the stratosphere, you know, sudden stratosphere won't take place. Should the zone wind into reverse. Another warming then over Siberia around the 22nd, 23rd of February. Again, that one pushing towards the pole, probably reverse the zone of winds once more into the final week of February. Um, and an ongoing displacement event of the polar vortex. Still not really splitting, is it? That's the one thing we're missing with this. Still not really splitting the polar vortex. More of a displacement than a split. Nevertheless, all GFS on some 100% of them are sending zone winds into reverse next week. So current position with the strength of zone winds just there, already weakening uh, and under average. By the time we get into next week, we are looking at a strong reversal of uh, zone winds. Remember, if you go underneath this zero line, uh, just here, then zone winds are going into reverse. On 100% of GFS ensemble members are doing that. So a major sun track rate warming will take place next week by the look of it. Um, lifting the zone wind up and then dropping it again as that second uh, warming takes place into the last week of February. Um, and uh, and so probably so probably we just struggle the zone wind back up into positivity, but then the second one will knock it up ahead again, and it goes negative again. So this is a major, you know, it's major development and a major attack on the stratospheric polar vortex and on the zone of wind. ECWF uh, 12s ever last night by University of Berlin looks like this. So this is out of 120 hours, which is the 15th of February. Almost got the zone of wind into reverse. You see the warming moving from Siberia into the North Pole. That's the North Pole just there, by the way. Um, no, almost got the zone of wind into reverse on the 15th of February, down to plus 0 0.2 MS. The next day, at 144 hours, which is going to be the 16th of February, the zone of wind has reversed, gone down to minus 2.9 ms. Um, uh, that zone, that uh, reversal zone of wind continues into the following day, down to minus 4.6 ms. Uh, and it's shown further into 192 hours, which is the 18th of February, down to minus 5. Uh, minus 5.9 ms um starts lifting back up it's still reverse still negative on the 19th of february 216 hours at minus 4.5 ms and uh 240 hours uh which is the 20th of february it's at minus 3.1 ms so still negative so gonna have the zone into reverse for several days at 10 hpa over the in the strategy over the north pole from around the 16th to the 20th of February. It may struggle a little bit positive around the 21st, 22nd of February, but if that next warming comes off, it is likely to reverse again as we go through the final week of February. Looking at uh, 30 HPA, so uh, uh, this is at 168 hours, it's closer to the troposphere, remember, at 30 HPA. Um, this is the 17th of February. Um, the total wind is at plus 6.4 ms then. Um, the next day, which is the 18th of February, weakening of the zone wind has taken place down to uh, plus 3.8 ms. Uh, then on the 19th of February, we go down to plus 3.1 ms. But the next day, which is a bit of a concern, uh, 20th of February, the zone wind has sort of stabilised and is weakly positive still at my 3.0 ms. So no reversal of zone of wings at 30 HPA up to the 20th of uh, February. Remember, to get a tropospheric response, we've got to propagate this warming down from the stratosphere, uh, 10 HPA, we've got to propagate it down through the stratosphere and send it to the troposphere. One of the ways we determine whether that's successfully taking place is whether zonal winds reverse at 30 HPA, because it's that bit closer to the troposphere. We have not got a reversal of zonal winds there. However, we know we're going to get the next warming, or we're probably going to get another warming um, into the final week of February. So possibly that will be the one that will send the zonal wind into reverse at 30 HPA. It's certainly going to be a weakening of zonal winds at 30 HPA, but if you want a tropospheric response via northern blocking to this sudden stratospheric warming, uh, you are going to be wanting to see the zonal wind. I think you're going to be wanting to see the zonal wind going into reverse at 30 HPA as well. 
as at 10 HPA. So uh, we we'll keep an eye on that, of course. We'll bring you up to date with uh, all of the developments as they transpire over the next few days. Certainly a major sudden stress threat warning is on the way next week, and uh, we will keep monitoring that, of course. Right, so centering temperature is currently sitting at uh, one at 5.2 uh, Celsius, which is 1.4 degrees above average. That's provisional to the temp. That will start lifting up, I think, as we go into next week. There is some uh, very mild weather on the way. These are the GFS upbred temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today. Red line is the third year up at air temperature average for London, starting off significantly above average. We're going to keep it that way for uh, the uh, next week at least. As we go into the final week of February, we have got a cooling trend taking place. There are some quite cold GFS on top of members. These, one, these ones down here. Also got milder on top of members up there. So a lot of scatter as we go into the final week of February. Um, you know, that is probably due part in part anyway to not playing around with uh, the uh, strap warming and any possible impacts from that. So, um, you know, just uncertainty. The Mars are playing around with various ideas at the moment, I think, as we go into the last week of February. But if we do get, like, a, a tropospheric response to the sudden stress rate, well, I would expect that to happen, you know, a little bit later on, really, than the final week of February. It might happen in the final week of February. Sometimes they can happen quickly. But as this is, it, it's going to be... A displacement rather than a split uh, event. I would expect the uh, response to take a little bit longer if you get one, and to be more in, into March. So uh, might might be a little bit progressive. But there are some quite cold ensemble members mixed in there at, uh, at uh, the, or in the final week of February. Before that, though, very mild um, for the next week, ten days. Lots of dry weather to come as well. Maybe goes a little bit more unsettled towards the end of the month. Temperature anomalies from the 11th, 19th February going to be mild an average, average not just the UK but through most parts of Northern Europe and uh, precipitation along from the 11th to 19th February going to be drier than normal particularly so down in the south but later we have a map from uh, northfuel.net shows high pressure sitting right over the top of uh, southern England and around the top of that we're dragging in a lot of cloud uh, mild temperatures from off the Atlantic as well so it's mainly dry cloudy and mild check out we get forecast if you want to know more about shorter range weather prospects right we say UK met your run in mid and Tuesday, high pressure over into the eastern country, low pressure out to the west, so mostly dry on Tuesday, and it will be mild as we head on through the middle part of next week, and second half of next week, a trough of low pressure comes in from off the Atlantic, bringing increasingly unsettled weather. We're a bit turning wet and windy, actually, by the time we get through to Saturday, deep low pressure north of Scotland, bringing plenty of wind and rain in from off the Atlantic. Icon looks like that again. Uh, high pressure to our east, low pressure is out to the west on uh, Tuesday, and then through next week, turns more unsettled. Much more unsettled, even down in the south, actually, around Thursday next week. This could bring wet and windy weather right way across the country through... Um, through, you know, the uh, last stages of next week. Uh, and heading into next weekend, another area of low pressure deep into West Scotland. So it looks a little bit more mobile there, doesn't it? By the time we get through to the end of next week, it should start to blow some of the cobwebs away. Uh, the GFS midnight run again, high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west on Tuesday. Into the middle next week, low pressure struggling to come in from off the Atlantic. Um, then we go probably wet and windy into next weekend with this area of low pressure. That could bring uh, heavy rain, strong winds even into the south. Into rather cold and northwesterly then as we go beyond that. Actually, we turn wind into the north briefly around the 22nd, 23rd of February. Get a little bit of a northerly uh, along there. That could bring, like, the coldest um, weather of month so far to the north, and maybe some snow showers. It doesn't last for long. Low pressure trying to come back in from off the Atlantic. Actually, finish up quite stormy there. Um, 27th of February, virtually at month's end, with the GFS midnight run. The 6th there. Much of a much issue the uh, next coming week. You know, we'll be most unsettled in the north, driest in the south, if that's right. Next weekend might turn more unsettled across the whole country, even down into the south. 
Uh, and then we head up toward day 10. Beyond it, we pull the high pressure further out into the Antarctic and drop in quite a cold northerly. Uh, so we go colder again on the GFS 6, then around the 22nd. Uh, 23rd of February doesn't last all that long, just turns wet and windy then, quite stormy potentially, uh, by months end there on the GFS 6 there. Uh, right, if you enjoyed this video, please can you like, share and subscribe, and we thank you so much everybody for doing that. Make sure you drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. GM, again, a high pressure to our east, low pressure out to the west on Tuesday, into uh, next week turns more unsettled about of heavy rain and right way across the coast towards the end of next week and further low pressure possibly there on Saturday into Sunday could bring another dose of wet weather before high pressure then starts building in from off the Atlantic turning a little bit drier and cooler with that area of high pressure potentially and uh, the ECM at WF is all much of a much this for Tuesday. Beyond that, we find that low pressure comes in from off the Atlantic later next week, brings our first rain potentially into the south, and then heading up toward day 10, we have high pressure to our south, low pressure to the north, still looking uh, relatively anti-cyclonic. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometro.com. Lots and lots of dry weather until the middle next week, a metal weather system comes across the country, bring some rain with it, and they get a little bit more mobility, some wet weather there uh, for a while towards the end of next week before it turns drier again, heading up toward day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. We'll get us to the 23rd of February, 20 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure just to our west. Low pressure is to our north and northeast. And winds are coming in from a westerly direction with that. So mostly dry and uh, you know, a little bit cooler perhaps by day 10. That includes the operational room. 16 with low pressure to the north. High pressure bridging into the south. So, you know, flat pancake really. And dry as in the south, what is in the north. And then 15 again with high pressure right out of the country. Brings lots of dry and red to the live web with it. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. It will go to the 26th of February. 30 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure way to our east. Low pressure is out 12 west and northwest. It can rain dry. It could be very mild. It could bring up wind from the south and southwest with that. And then 21 with high pressure right in over top of the country. That keeps it mostly dry. Could be frost and fog of course early and late but uh, by day as the sun is getting ever stronger by the end of February probably feeling quite pleasant. Notice no northern blocking there with those options uh, today from the Icelandic Met Office. So um, the ECR ensembles are backed away from like the idea of blocking up towards the last stages of February anyway. Uh, CFS BG finally meets the 500 millibar high times breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 11th to 17th of February. The coming week we'll have high pressure over to the east of the country. Lots of dry weather to come. Week 2 going to be the 18th to 24th of February. High pressure to our south, low pressure to the north. Again, that keeps the mostly dry and mild weather going. Week 3. It's going to be the 25th of February to the 3rd of March. High pressure is right in over the top of the country then. Uh, could be chilly by night, but mainly dry by day. And then week four is going to be uh, 4 to the 10th of February. High pressure just easing towards Scandinavia. Um, no, not all that far away from Polygon and Eastley, but up to that point, probably still reasonably uh, mild, I would have thought, with, uh, you know, just the ongoing dry weather, uh, high and dry, even into the early part of March. Will that high pressure eventually go north and set up some blocking within high latitudes and turn us colder? We shall see, and time will tell. If you enjoy the video, then please tell you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. <coughs> Excuse me, and why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we thank you so very much, everybody, um, for doing that. Right, that is it for today's videos. We've just got to tell you what's coming up tomorrow. So, we'll start on 6 a.m. upload. We've got the sixth update for spring uh, 2023 on the way tomorrow as well, by the way. And the intent of 14 day to bring you up to date with all of the sun stress rate world's latest developments. So, keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this year and for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.